we're, we're going next level. Okay, so that's next level, so we're going next level. We're going to sing, right? My daughter would say something like, this is so extra. <laughs> but of course, you know, I'm from the 60s, so I'm going to say extraordinary. <laughs> you know. um, just looking at that um, uh, clip from Daga, you can really um, see what an extraordinary video document that the House of Justice has given us. And really, um, it's been crafted in such a way that each segment of the, of the video is, is a story uh, in itself. It's a complete story. And, you know, it's full of statements, just um, simple statements that are made by uh, your fellow believers around the world that really, um, you know, contain a whole world of truth and insight. And I mean that, uh, that lady at the end there where she says, I find my, my little ways to serve him. And really, to serve him to the end is really there's a whole depth of understanding and truth and purity in that simple statement. Of course, um, you know, I can only see you dimly uh, for with all these bright lights in my eyes, but um, um, really it reminds me of the value of this faith that we, we have and the value of these days and that really every moment is precious. And of course, um, you know, you can also recall the words of Abdul Baha when he's, uh, you know, he'd, he'd been a prisoner for most of his life and uh, visited America and was sitting in a carriage and he was being fated by uh, religious leaders and uh, in the press. And he, he made the comment, oh, Baha'u'llah, what hast thou done? And I think it's very apt here as well. I think... Seeing all of you evokes um, really a wonder um, in the power of Baha'u'llah to summon humanity to his vision. I think we've heard a couple of times that uh, this conference is, is historic, uh, historic in the, in the numbers of the friends that are assembled here. And in a way, we should not be surprised. This is a faith of firsts. You know, building a world civilization has never been done before. So every, every step that we make in the progress and the unfoldment of this faith is a first. In a sense, we are writing history. And every step, every step we are writing history. And, you, and you know, like as we're in this process, every now and again it's good to take a pause, to take a break, and to think of ourselves and where we are and who we are. And then to draw strength from our history, our shared history. We've had these wonderful stories of mother and father done. Just draw strength from that history. And then think about where we are going and then just get on with it and write the next chapter in this history. So that's my way of saying this is going to be an amazing weekend. So maybe just in the next few minutes we will um, hopefully uh, learn the lines of a very short song that the friends in Daga, uh, the children of Daga sing. And then if we have time We'll just briefly explore three elements of the spiritual state that really are essential uh, to growth. So just at the beginning of this year, I had a, a privilege, uh, only the second time I've attended a reflection meeting in Daga. The first one almost had as many people as this conference. That was back in 2003. There was a thousand people at that conference. But they've learned to, that, you know, that these... Uh, Reflection meetings are every cycle, so they have to make them sustainable. And at this, uh, at this reflection meeting that I attended in a village called Guadede, um, uh, had about 150 people. And they were singing, uh, the children were singing this song. And, and, and you've seen what the cluster looks like. So, there's, as, as, as the gentleman was saying in the video, that there are no roads, really. 
and that everywhere we, they have to walk. And you saw them even, uh, there's no power, there's no running water, so you saw them carrying the generator uh, so that they could have light um, uh, in, in these gatherings that they have. And, and so we had a, a, a generator providing us with power at the reflection meeting. So the children were singing this song, and, and um, I'd heard that song many times before, but then just at that moment, it occurred to me that this is in fact, um, uh, that this song was in essence uh, what all advanced clusters are, are doing. This is who they are becoming. And also all clusters that are at earlier stages uh, of development are aspiring uh, to become. Okay, so let's give it a go. Let's uh, sing the first line. So I'll, I'll give it a go, individual embarrassment, and then we'll have collective embarrassment. <laughs> okay, but we have to sing it in a Papua New Guinean accent. All right? It won't just be effective unless we sing it in an accent. So where's the first line? How do I do this? Oh, no. No? I don't know where I'm going. Okay. Um, it's not there, so I guess I'll, we'll just have to... to, to, to it, it's, it's, it's very simple. It's very simple. Okay, the first line is, The movement of population... Under the banner of Baha'u'llah. Very simple, right? We can do that. All right, so we'll do it together. The movement of population Under the banner of Baha'u'llah. It's beautiful. So we could ask uh, ourselves, who is this population? And how can we conceive of this movement? And we've heard some wonderful insights have been shared by the representative of the councillors and the, and the National Spiritual Assembly. And the House of Justice, as it's been mentioned, is encouraging us to think of smaller settings in neighbourhoods, in our, in our towns, and maybe villages in our rural areas like Daga. So you heard from one of the friends um, in Daga was talking about um, how the friends have dawn prayers and how that they are moving to the Baha'i Center and that you know, the, the youth and the children and junior youth, women and men, are all participating uh, in devotional meetings. And then we also heard in, the, um, uh, in another segment of this uh, video about Sydney of how um, uh, the whole cluster can move. And then they talk about um, uh, how they're having these um, uh, youth camps during the school holidays so that all the youth in the, in, the, uh, in, in the cluster can participate in these youth camps. So this is something that they're having at the cluster level, which is something which is available to the entire cluster and is helping the entire cluster to move. So you have these, these two settings um, that were highlighted this morning, this focus uh, settings that are happening at the level of the neighborhood or the village, and then... Um, efforts that involve the participation of the entire cluster. I think, you know, the, the um, uh, Book 10, Unit 3 also introduces us to this concept of concentric circles, right? So that you have uh, the friends at the center of the circle that are accompanying others, you know, maybe as children's class teachers, animators, uh, tutors, um, uh, coordinators or collaborators, these are the friends um, that maybe are at the center of this uh, concentric circle. And then there's another circle around that, which are the circle of friends that are participants of these core activities. Right? And then you have another uh, circle of, uh, of the population. So we're talking about the population now, right? That, um, that are aware of us, and they know what we do, uh, but maybe not yet participating, right? And then you have maybe an outermost circle of friends that we haven't started talking to yet. So, you know, like there's this range or there's these concentric circles uh, within the population. So we're talking about the population now in smaller settings. 
So with this concept, we can start to think about the movement of a population, right, in a smaller setting. And the House of Justice talks about a centripetal force, right? A centripetal force is the opposite of a centrifugal force, right? A centrifugal force is spinning us apart, um, but a centripetal force is bringing us closer to the center, closer and closer together. And, and the House of Justice talks about forces both within the Baha'i community and outside the Baha'i community that are contributing to this centripetal force. You know, we can't do much about the outside forces. I mean, we can respond to them well, and these forces are doing their work, and we respond to them with love and wisdom. I mean, we've just had a a horrific example uh, of that uh, um, across the ditch, as you say, in New Zealand. Uh, An example of of hate-based violence. Uh, This is one of those examples, but it gives an opportunity for the community to transcend uh, our differences. But the forces within the faith are within our hands. They're in our hands. And really, this is where we need to focus. You know, and I was uh, in India recently visiting uh, Delhi Cluster, which is another very advanced cluster. It's an urban cluster, obviously, where there's almost as many people (laughs) as in Australia in this one urban environment. And uh, I was able to go and visit um, um, the neighborhoods that are close to the house of worship. And, and, you know, the friends live in, in very small homes, you know, tiny homes where the bed takes up most of the space. So like when we go to visit, we just all just jump on the bed and um, then start having a conversation. And I was just um, impressed how these collaborators and coordinators of the program were conversing with the young people that were in that home. And it was this conversation that was part of this centripetal force, you know, bringing these friends closer and closer into the center. And, you know, maybe the conversation went something like this, um, you know, talking to a young, a young woman or a young man and saying, you know, your school holidays are coming up soon. And um, you've, you've completed um, uh, uh, book, book three, and now, um, during the school holidays, there's going to be another camp, and you're going to do book five, and, and hopefully you'll, start, you know, you, you'll be able to start a junior youth group, and I'll help you to come and start that junior youth group. So there's this you know, constant uh, conversation that's taking place between those that are maybe in the inner circle with those that are in the outer circle, and gradually drawing them in uh, to the process. You know, and one of the things that um, I realized just in the environment that there was, you know, so many distractions, so many forces, you know, so many um, uh, forces of oppression, of culture, of family, of economics, um, of education that were distracting, uh, that can distract these young people. So that this conversation with this Um, centripetal force which is very lovingly and gently uh, exerted on the on these young people through conversation had to be constant it has to be a constant force uh, not to allow these uh, forces of oppression and distraction to uh, interrupt its flow so I saw um, um, this movement this dynamism, you know, of these, of these friends. And I guess you could say it's an essential feature of those that are serving the nucleus of friends. Those that are at the forefront of the community building process. It is part of that centripetal force which is bringing us together. Really it's love expressed in action. But isn't this the requirement of each of us? You know, really to move, to speak, to have vision inspired by Baha'u'llah, to have a sense of mission and purpose, and ultimately to be a river of love and encouragement. This is not just for the, uh, those at the center 
of this process, but it's for all of us. Okay, so we'll go to the next, the next line of the song. And the next line really addresses why are we doing all of these things. You know, we've talked about the core activities, and there are so many things that, uh, that we do. We make plans, and we review them, and we have these gatherings and these spaces, and we look at statistics, and we do so many things. But, you know, why? Why are we doing these things? And, of course, at some level, we know why. But, you know, the deeper our understanding, the deeper will be the roots of motivation. You know, Book 7, we, we talk about this, the, the, you know, this is linked between understanding and motivation, sustaining motivation. And, you know, the deeper that understanding is, the deeper will be the roots of motivation. Especially, and, and so we can withstand anything. You know, we can withstand tests and keep moving forward. You know, at, 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 uh, at the Baha'i World Center recently, there was a gathering uh, for friends that are serving in the most um, uh, advanced clusters in the world. So there were uh, three from Africa, no surprises there, and uh, three from uh, India, no surprises there, but there were two from Australasia. How good is that? So... So both Sydney and Daga were represented at this conference. And, you know, one of the members of the, the House of Justice addressed this point um, at the beginning of that, uh, um, that gathering. And, um, you know, he said that, that we'll be talking about a lot of different things in the next coming days. And he said, but we must always remember that in the final, final analysis, what we're undoing is the unfoldment of the covenant. So that was mentioned um, this morning. It was actually our very own uh, Mr. Stephen Hall that uh, was asked to, um, to begin that uh, gathering. And he mentioned, he mentioned this, and he quoted from Abdul Bahar about the covenant. I just want to share that quotation. He said, Today the Lord of hosts is the defender of the covenant. The forces of the kingdom protect it. Heavenly souls tender their services and heavenly angels promulgate and spread it broadcast. If it is considered with insight, it can, be seen, it can be seen that all the forces of the universe in the last analysis serve the covenant. In the future, it shall be made evident and manifest. So, I don't think we can even begin to unravel the mysteries of that statement in this gathering. We can only really stand in awe of it. And, you know, I, I've been thinking um, uh, about the Institute process, and really the first seven books of the, of the sequence of courses are really about the individual doing something and developing the capabilities that he needs to do it and the spirit in which he does it and so on. But in book eight, it explains really the bigger picture and the context of all this individual and collective um, activity, the unfoldment of the covenant. So, okay, let's do the second line. The pivot of the oneness of mankind is nothing but the power of the covenant. The pivot of the oneness of mankind is nothing but the power of the covenant. So the third line of the song refers to the community building activities in which we are engaged. And as we get drawn further into the life of society, social action influences this whole process. So this third line is a little bit more there's a bit more packed into it. Study circles, junior youth, children's class, devotional meeting, social action reflecting all. There's a lot in there, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, we, we can say, well, what happened to ISGP and home visits? And, but, I mean, you can only put so much into one line. 
So let's try it. One, two, three. Study circles, junior youth, children's class, devotional meeting, social action reflecting all. My God, you guys are great. You know, just that line, the fact that study circles is first, right? Really implies the centrality of the institute and that it really is at the heart of the community building process. And really, we can never take our eyes off the ball on this, you know, the institute itself. And, you know, when I was in at this reflection meeting in in Daga and I was looking uh, across the Sea of Flens, of course, there was no light shining in my face. I could actually see their faces. And um, I could see that really there was generations of tutors amongst them that had been raised up over the last 20 years. And really it occurred to me at that point that this is uh, one of the strengths of Daga, um, was that that generation after generation of young people, they had uh, paid attention to raising tutors. And that, you know, amongst the audience there was, you know, maybe a former board member or a former regional coordinator and they still saw themselves as part of this family of friends that are serving as tutors. And I thought to myself, this is really one of the great strengths uh, of the Daga cluster. And it recalls to me a story that was told by, uh, by a member of the teaching center. And he said that he went to a community and someone asked him a question about um, having too many caps or too many roles. You know, I'm an assistant, I'm, I'm serving on the... Uh, local spiritual assembly, I'm a member of the ATC, you know, and sometimes uh, when resources are limited, we wear many different caps or hats. And um, uh, he responded and said, you know, he said, most of these caps, uh, we don't choose to put them on ourselves, they're chosen for us, you know, we're elected onto the local assembly and that's, that's your cap for one year or you're uh, appointed to serve as a coordinator and that's your role for, that, uh, for a period of time. Those things um, uh, are not uh, part of our, our choice, but we can choose to become a tutor. We can choose to put that cap on our head. And that cap should never be taken off. Those others will be taken off, but the cap of the tutor will always be there. So uh, I think this is a, a, visual, uh, a, you know, a vision or an aspiration or a goal that we can have for ourselves and even our children to serve as a tutor, you know. And um, so, you know, like what, you know, we can even go so far as to say, what do you want to be when you grow up, you know? <laughs> I want to be a carpenter or a social worker or a nurse or a doctor and a tutor, <laughs> Of course, um, uh, in Daga, the education of children and junior youth and youth is always on the agenda of the 31 local spiritual assemblies and the cluster institutions. And systematic efforts are being made to formalize this process from grade to grade and um, year to year. And, you know, especially at transition points um, in this educational process, you know, like when a child um, finishes uh, children's classes and is transitioning to the junior youth program or when the junior youth are transitioning uh, to uh, becoming youth and being able to uh, enter the institute process, these points of transition, everyone gets involved in, in, in this process. And, you, and just before the reflection meeting, there was a, um, a gathering that was hosted by the local spiritual assembly of Guedede for the six youth, I think it was, uh, junior youth that were transitioning to becoming 15 years old and the whole community uh, was involved in this uh, celebration. And so, um, um, you know, they were given a prayer book, they, they were spoken to about obligatory prayer, uh, they were given book one, they were given a declaration card and um, uh, they were talked about, uh, you know, giving to the fund and being eligible to uh, pay hula, or all of these, you know, elements that we, uh, you know, consider about when um, a junior youth transitions to become uh, a youth 
and really a member of the community in all these respects. So I talked about fasting and obligatory prayer and so on. And then right after that gathering, they attended the um, um, uh, you know, in- intensive campaign that was held for youth in the whole cluster. So there's, you know, there's a, it, everyone is involved in this, in, in this process. You know, just reflecting back to the consultations, talking about devotional meetings now, just reflecting back to the consultations in Haifa, you know, we had two uh, friends from Daga there, the, the two auxiliary board members. One is um, Berin and one is Jean. And, and I don't know whether you've seen it. I think, I think Berin was in the, in the video. He's, they're, they're very, you know, their stature is, is like up to my shoulder and I'm not a big guy. Um, but their stature in terms of their... Um, uh, spiritual stature is, is something to behold, you know. And so, you know, we're, we're in Haifa and we're in this um, in this room in the in the teaching center building. And you know, they've put the the tables and chairs in a in a big square. And maybe there's a, around about thirty to forty of us there. And you know, um, uh, the friends from Sydney were sitting next to us, and then the friends from Papua New Guinea, Daga, and myself and Councillor Rue were. Uh, so we're sort of like on one side and. Um, uh, the members of the House of Justice would join us, you know, maybe three or four or five members, and they were sitting uh, closer to the door so they could come and go as their work demanded. But in this particular occasion, I think there was three or four members, and Baron was sharing about um, the um, devotional meetings in, in, in Daga. And, um, you know, he talked about the, the spiritual atmosphere of the devotional meetings and the songs, and, and we felt that this morning as well. And, you know, he, he spoke with just great conviction, you know, and there was a five-minute rule in, 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 in Haifa, and he thought it applied to everyone else except him, you know, because, you know, like, when he was done, he, you know, he wouldn't finish until he was done. And, you know, so the members of the House of Justice are right there, and he's looking directly at them. And he says, you know, entering the devotional meeting in, in Daga uh, is like entering the house of worship. And then he paused. He says, but we do not have a house of worship yet. And then he paused. And then he looked straight at them and said, but God willing. <laughs> you know, the whole room just erupted. And the members of the House of Justice were laughing this well. But, you know, Berrin just um, waited a few seconds and then just continued talking as if he had just spoken some facts and just moved on. So this conception of the house of worship in Daga is, is not a theoretical concept, but it's an emerging reality. It's really only a question of when. And of course, in all advanced clusters, we, we can begin to think like that. All right, so let's go to the last line. And it really, um, the last line speaks to this precious creation of Baha'u'llah that has been given to us and it is unerringly guiding this process. So the last line goes, under the guidance of the universal house of justice, under the guidance of the universal house of justice. So for the friends in Daga, this is a central concept. But really, for the Baha'is of the world, it is a central concept. It has implications for how we study this guidance and how we seek to implement it in a learning mode. How we can keep going back and back to certain passages, knowing full well that understanding only emerges in the light of an ongoing process of study, action, and reflection on action. On the one hand, this guidance is descriptive of what has been learned thus far, but it is also creative, and we will only learn about the concepts in it more deeply over time. Just from personal experience, I remember in 2001 reading about that training was not sufficient, that we needed encouragement. And really, you know, 18 years ago, I really had no idea what encouragement meant. And really, my, my understanding has been evolving over the last 18 years of this process of action and reflection. And even when I was in Delhi recently and seeing these coordinators and collaborators 
constantly visiting the homes of these youth that they're engaged with, I started to learn a little bit more about what we mean by encouragement. Okay, unfortunately, I, I don't have the, the lines of the song up here, so um, you may have forgotten the first line already. <laughs> um, but uh, look, I'll sing it and you can just join along with me. The movement of population under the banner of Baha'u'llah, the pivot of the oneness of mankind is nothing but the power of the covenant. Study circles, junior youth, children's class, devotional meeting, social action reflecting all. Under the guidance of the universal house of justice. Give yourself a hand. So this song really describes the, the culture of the friends in Daga. It is how they think and how they act and how they envision the future. How much time have we got? It's time to finish, huh? It's time to finish. So this is where the whole process is taking us. So, uh, so where is this process, uh, the whole process taking us? The House of Justice uses the word futile to describe any attempt to imagine the future civilization that is unfolding under the revelation of Baha'u'llah. It's futile. It's a very strong word. They said, propelled by the forces generated both within and outside the Baha'i community, the forces, uh, the peoples of the earth can be seen moving from divergent directions closer and closer to one another towards what will be a world civilization so stupendous in character that it would be futile for us to imagine it today. And I think as futile as it is to imagine the condition and the state of that future world civilization. It's really also futile to try and imagine the character of the citizen of that future world civilization. How will that person think? How will they act? On what spiritual forces will they be able to draw? And on what level of unity? What will be the level of unity that exists in the collective of that world? It is beyond our conception but we know it is upon the educational process which the Baha'i world is engaged, embedded in the plan of God, that will propel the evolution of that citizen. We are only at the beginning of centuries of endeavor in that area. Friends, there's, there was a lot more to share, but we've come to the end of our time, and I can just um, uh, say to uh, how grateful I am uh, to be here with you uh, these, this weekend and to wish you Godspeed in all your efforts uh, to, to serve this, really, this formidable um, but also irresistible divine plan. <laughs>